Eric Dieters, the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. Good morning. I hope you are ready for your daily dose of radio superbity, which I will deliver in what they call spades. The cliche, the metaphor. I am going to deliver it to you in spades. And in fact, I'm kind of, uh, I'm in a great mood. You know, life is such a challenge, isn't it? But isn't it neat when you hit those moments? And sometimes it's just for a moment. Sometimes it's for an hour, sometimes it's for a day, sometimes it's for a night, sometimes it's for more than one day, where you just feel like all is right in your world. I am at one of those points right now. I mean, I just, it started last night, and it's followed me into this morning, and it's, and and by the way, I know there's going to be a speed bump somewhere along the day, there's going to be challenges, but all is right in my world. And it feels good. And in fact, it feels so good. You know, I like to mix it up every once in a while. I want to start out with the feel-good song, TC. Can we can we begin the show with a feel-good song? And we can always play it again. Yes, we can do that. TC, you are awesome. And you know what the feel-good song is? We've neglected them. We've never had them as a feel-good <laughs> song. The greatest band of all time. And we've neglected them. No more. The Beatles. Feel all right. I love this song. Call day to get you money to buy you things. That's true. Oh, yes. Everything. (laughs) That's what it's all about, isn't it, TC? Now, see, that's what that... My wife is sleeping right now, so she doesn't get to hear this. Oh, well. Oh, well. There's your cowbell. There you go. Love that cowbell. Hard day's night. I love listening to the Beatles with headphones. You know what? I like the Beatles. I love the Beatles. I love all their hits. I mean, I bought their album, like the greatest hits, and it's a long album. (laughs) Oh, with the the uh, the um the one that they just recently they were, put out. Yeah, they yeah. put out. I think last year, a year before. I got that for Christmas one year. I was like, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Well, that's the feel good song for you. The hard days night. Uh, I got. Did you t- have a hard days night? No, I had a wonderful night. Uh-huh. And, and, and I gotta I gotta tell you an anecdote. Uh, yesterday I'm in trial, uh-huh. and trial is exhausting. I'm in trial all day, and I had been up since uh, two o'clock in the morning, so I go to my office. And I fall asleep at 3 o'clock. I mean, trial got over 2.30. And I just, man, I got to crash. So I, I lay down to sleep. And I wake up an hour after my sleep, my dad. My dad just comes to the office, you know. He needed me for some business matter. So he, I couldn't go back to sleep. So I got up and I started working. And I, I mean, but I was still exhausted. Now, here's the kind of husband I am. My, I, t- I text, last thing I do before I go home is I always text, what's for dinner? Like, this, do I have to pick it up? <laughs> that's or is the she, kind of husband or you are. Or is she cooking dinner? You know what I'm saying? Well, that, that's what's what I for think. dinner? <laughs> it, it's, it's dinner question mark. In other words, is she cooked it or do I need to bring it home? Ah, okay. That's gotcha. what I'm oh, asking. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, she said we could have roasted chicken at home or Olive Garden. What do you want? And I said, what do you want? I could just tell she wanted to go to Olive Garden. Yeah. As tired as I was. I took the wife to Olive Garden, which was very nice. Good and man. then I needed to get fitted my tuck still for my daughter's wedding, March 23rd. So we go to Men's Warehouse where we get – I'm going to get fitted for this tux. I, God damn, I told myself when I told this story I wouldn't say where it was because I don't want to give away who the person is, but I'm going to do it anyway. Too late. So anyway, we can edit this, this out young girl, this young girl, and if somebody knows this young girl, I apologize because I like her. It was just funny. This young girl, I don't know how old she is, 19, 20 maybe, big breastuses exposed, little dress, and she had a little piercing in the nose. She was attractive, uh, big lips without the collagen. I mean, she just had that pouty look. She looked like the girl that's at the sorority or frat party with the beer going, yeah, shots! Now, is this a compliment or, 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 or what? Well, no, here's what happens. You're going to love this. So I'm sitting there. My wife's in one chair. I'm in one chair. And then my wife gets up and starts walking around. I text my wife. She's a trip, isn't she? LOL. All right? So then I'm standing up, and this young girl is doing the measurements things, TC. She's doing the measurements. My wife is standing next to me. 
And she goes, you just sent me a text. She's a real trip, isn't she? Right in front of the girl. I'm like. Now did the so the girl walks know? away and my wife goes, "Oh my God, I'm sorry." So when the girl came back, I said, "I can't believe you just got that text. I sent it sooner. I, I sent it earlier today." <laughs> uh, that's smart. I was about Gabby. Gabby's her son's girlfriend. <laughs> it, is it not hilarious? That was a nice way to get out of that. That was that I was, maneuvered. I'm quick on my feet. That's that why they pay good. me the big bucks. Now I hope she's not listening right now, or she'll say, "Hey, that happened to me last night." <laughs> No, she's probably sleeping. If she was working last night, she's yeah, still asleep. Yeah, she's And again, she's a nice girl. She just had this attitude about her, you know, like like gum chewing. <laughs> and man, she was hanging out. Really disturbed me, TC. I, was, I, 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 I felt like, so will, you put that, will you put all that back in there? Will you put it all back in? Put those away. Put them away. Put them away. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, quote of the day is a great quote. It's from Abraham Lincoln. Work, work, work is the main thing. How you like that? Another quote from Lincoln, which I love, I, I thought is, I, I ought to use it instead of just say it. Uh, he did not trust. He goes, I do not trust a man with no vices. I like that. Yeah, Mitt Romney doesn't have any vices, does he? <laughs> mm, that's interesting. He does not. He does not. Today in history, great history, 1930, the 27th president of the United States, William Howard Taft, God love him, passed away at age 72. He was a troubled man. He was a troubled man. The only president to be a president and a Supreme Court justice. 1960, Democrat John F. Kennedy and Republican Richard M. Nixon won their New Hampshire primary, presidential primaries. Kennedy Nixon. The race was on. And in boxing in 1971, Joe Frazier defeated Ali by a decision which was billed the fight of the century. At Madison Square Garden. Uh, famous birthdays today. Oh, my goodness. This is hilarious. We have two teenage heartthrobs, girls. James Vanderbeek. Whatever happened to him, man? He was great in Varsity Blues. Varsity Blues is my favorite sports movie of all time. Is it really? Because it had Miss Davis in it. <laughs> it had Billy Bob in it. It had Thunderstruck Slow Motion High School. What happened to James Vanderbeek? Has he been in anything? I don't know. And I think it doesn't hang out at the, at the Peach Pit now. And Freddie Prince Jr. I just want everybody to know that if I look like James Vanderbeek and Freddie Prince Jr., the hell with the law practice. <laughs> I just stand around looking good, making money. Yeah, that's pretty much what they do. I mean, that's just a, you know what? It's a gift from the gods from the gene pool to look like James Vanderbeek or Freddie Prince Jr. Don't or T.C. Summers. Don't worry about that acting stuff. <sighs> well, thank you. Thank you. Three-day forecast. It's raining and thundering today. Friday is going to be sunny. Saturday is sunny. And guess what? We're going to we're not going to jump to the we're not going to jump to the to the sports yet, but lots of things going on in sports oh, when the yeah. old college basketball starting to eat up. Our history story today. Many Americans think of Francis Scott Key as the composer of the Star Spangled Banner. But many don't know that while he did write the lyrics, he did not write the melody. The melody was taken from a popular, and I knew this story, this is a good story, from a popular English song at the time called, this is kind of funny, the Anacreonic Song, which was the official song of the Anacreonic Society, an 18th century gentleman's club in London. By the way, at Men's Warehouse last night, I picked up three books. True story. One book is called How to Be a Gentleman. Two, how does a gentleman dress? And three, tributes and toasts for a gentleman. They are awesome little books. Great stuff for radio. And in fact, I want to show off on the video cast. Look at this, TC. This tie right here. Yeah. Bought for Men's Warehouse last night. New tie. My Don't you love my gray and white striped shirt? My gray suit. That's working. And, and you know yeah. a color that I really love? Burgundy. Yeah. I dig burgundy. And it's nice against the gray. Who are you wearing? Who are you wearing? <laughs> I'm wearing, um, what, 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 give me a fashion designer. Tell you oh, about a gentleman. What, what do I know? But you've got the GQ look. I got the got, G, got, GQ look today. Yeah, you know, GQ that, look today. You, you, you qualify today. That's because, it. Because this was the song of a gentleman's club. But we digressed. It is generally believed that the specific individual who wrote the melody was John Stafford Smith, one of the society members. The melody became very popular in America during the War of 1812 and was used in the Star Spangled Banner and other patriotic songs. So when you think of Francis Scott Key, you should also think of John 
Stafford, Smith. Isn't it weird how in history some people just get to shaft? Yeah. We're going to probably get to shaft in radio, TC. They're going to always be talking about other people in radio, and they're going to forget about us, even though we are the only tri-state radio show with video cast and the first to predict Mitt Romney, the winner in Ohio. Just like uh, Harry Steinfeld. That's right. Harry Steinfeld. Who the hell was he? See? We come back. More radio superbity on Real Talk 1160. Remember Michael Savage, Michael Savage, Michael Savage. Noon to three today on Real Talk 1160. And now, back to the very dapper Bulldog. Eric Dieters, the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. Dapper Dan. You know, it's important to have a sidekick producer who knows a little bit of something. And TC (laughs) does. Now, I heard of Tinker Evers and Chance. Famous infield. That great infield double play. So who was the guy you mentioned? This is a great trivia who, question. The third baseman. Nobody knows this guy. It was Harry Harry Steinfeld. Harry Steinfeld. He was the third baseman. I, he had to have felt left out. Yeah, he did. Good you golly. Know? You know? Hey, man, I'm third baseman over here. We do some double plays from third sometimes. Just can't. Just can't. How do you fit that into the that little, you know. And that was the Cubs, right? Was it the Cubs? I, I, I'm not Tinker sure. Tinker Evers think, and Chance. Was I think you're right. I think you're right. I think it was the Cubs. But see, we'll be like that guy. People say, Who? Ladies, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, get ready to laugh. This is the joke that I've been wanting to have all week long, and finally Sarah stuck it in here today. And I apologize to all blondes. Let's face it, you get picked on just like lawyers. We got to be tough. If you're a lawyer and a blonde, you just got to be tough. And we can take it, can't we, blondes? Bulldog loves blondes. Brunettes, redheads, <laughs> purple hairs. <laughs> Humor. A blonde... Wants to go ice fishing. She's seen many books on the subject and finally gets all the necessary tools together she made for the ice. After positioning her comfy footstool, she makes a circular cut in the ice. Suddenly, from the sky, a voice boomed. There are no fish under the ice. Startled, the blonde moved back from the ice poured a thermos of cappuccino, and began to cut yet another hole. Again from the heavens, the voice bellowed, There are no fish under the ice. The blonde, now worried, moved away, clear down to the opposite end of the ice. She set up her stool once more and tried again to cut her hole. The voice came once more. There are no fish under the ice. The blonde stopped. Looked skyward and said, Is that you, Lord? The voice replied, No, this is the manager of the hockey rink. (laughs) Yes! You hit it on that one. You hit that one. You hit it. On a scale of one to five. Five. That's a five. That's a keeper. Is, is that a keeper? That's that, a keeper. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, that will be on my blog. It'll be on the Real Talk 1160's Facebook site. So you can uh, use that over and over as you go out partying during the NCAA tournaments. Hey, we have uh, uh, a, a long distance, I guess we call me a, a reporter today. Long distance reporter. Yeah, Ricky normally in Independence is uh, in R- New Orleans. Ricky from Independence, you're on Real Talk 1160. Say something witty or wise. How's it going, Bulldog? I'm in New Orleans. What's going on in New Orleans? Is it, it Mardi is, Gras over? It is over, but now it's SEC tournament. It's a big deal. All right. So what are you doing down there, Ricky? Uh, I am partying it up, and I'm a little hungover and calling you, but I'm dedicated enough to let you know that Bulldog Nation is now down in New Orleans. <laughs> well, I want you to know, while you're down there, you just keep partying, and you keep recruiting additional Bulldog Nation members down there. I got a great story to tell you. Uh, somebody uh, that's a member of Bulldog Nation was working as a videographer up in Chicago with a Chicago lawyer and a New York lawyer, Ricky, and uh, he was listening to my show uh, by, by his phone, his iPhone, and all of a sudden, these Chicago and New York lawyers, which were kind of dapper guys, said, who is that guy? He's pretty funny. And uh, my, the videographer says, well, that's my boss. And they said, wait a minute. I thought you, you worked for a lawyer. He goes, I do work for a lawyer. That's him. And they asked, the Chicago and New York lawyers said, we want to be members of Bulldog Nation. That's so amazing. we're spreading across the country, Ricky. With your help, we can take Louisiana. 
Absolutely. And it, you have got to see the scene. I already sent you one picture, um, but... I got like, it. I got it. Just, who was that, who was that attractive young lady next to you there, Ricky? Um, I don't know. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Typical New Orleans party. I was party. actually walking down Bourbon Street, and the whole UK team, including Anthony Davis and Terrence Jones, and all of them were actually walking down Bourbon Street. I didn't get a good picture of them, but I was just, like, amazed. I was like, wow, these guys are on Bourbon Street, and I'm already drunk. So, <laughs> Well, I, you know, UK plays at 1 o'clock tomorrow, right? I believe so. Anybody, right. anybody in my law office that's a UK fan is going to be the, have the afternoon off. There you go. That's a good good for you. I mean, that's how dedicated I, that. I am to blue. And how about Anthony Davis, SEC defensive player, SEC player of the year, SEC <laughs> freshman of the year, Calipari coach of the year, uh, Davis sporting news player of the year. It's going to be amazing. I yeah. cannot wait to go to the games. All right. Well, Ricky, you have a good time, and give us a full report after UK beats the hell out of whoever they end up playing. We'll do the Bulldogs you like. All right. That's Ricky from New Orleans down there. See the UK Wildcats play. Shakespeare of the day, oh, let me not be mad, not mad, sweet heaven, keep me in temper, I would not be mad. I don't know what the hell that was. <laughs> Somebody must have done something to make him and I, angry. And this is an old dog saying, but it's still classic. Life is like a dog sled team. If you ain't the lead dog, the scenery never changes. <laughs> ain't that the truth? You know, you know, everybody dogs the word ain't. Doesn't ain't have its place in English language? Well, There's sometimes a well-placed ain't just works. I don't know. It you don't depends, like, you what don't side, like? it depends what side of I-75 you're from. Ha! All right, let's do some jack wagons and some Oracle. And, and I, I can't get my computer. Maybe it'll come up now. Here's the jack wagons of the day. All right. Larry Summers is apparently has a p- potential to be head of the World Bank. Ladies and gentlemen of the American jury, watch the inside job, and you will learn that Larry Summers – Stop the regulation of mortgage-backed securities and double-swap derivatives when it was still time to do it. You jack wagon. So we're going to jack wagon up old Larry Sum. Also being jack wagoned up. This is incredible. And I hate to jack wagon up the president again. You but jack I, wagon. But he does a trifecta, okay? Yesterday, it's, and I'm going to get to this in politics, he has attended 191 fundraisers uh, since, th- you know, this election cycle. Two... They're cutting military benefits. It's an incredible story. We're going to get to that. And three, they built a $700,000 soccer field for the prisoners of Gitmo. You jack wagon. Sorry, Mr. President. You jack wagon. Oracles. This is the first time. You know we had an oracle for somebody just being lucky? We're going to just give an oracle for somebody being filthy rich. Carlos Slim. Now, how would you like to go go through life with that name? You walk into a bar, what's your name? Carlos Slim. They're immediately going to think that you're some kind of rap star. I'm Carlos Slim. You know, Slim Shady, <laughs> Carlos Slim. The Mexican who's worth $69 billion. You know, he really was at $68 billion and he, he went to his buddy and said, Hey, man, this would be kind of funny. If I was worth $69 billion, can you oh, give me a billion? <laughs> Also get receiving Oracle status, Peyton Manning at his press conference. All class, is he not? Yeah. All class. And then finally, we're going to discuss the Obama video that was released by Breitbart last night on Hannity. It's good stuff. It's not a that kind of video. It's a college protest video. So we give Breitbart Oracle status. If you, check, if you check out my blog and my newsletter, you will see that I have posted uh, tornado victim relief fundraisers. Uh, there's one at the Newport Syndicate. There's one down in uh, Village Drive Shopping in Florence. Uh, let me see. There's one. Uh, there's some stuff there for Matthew 25 Ministries. Uh, there's a benefit at Monkey Dews in Walton. Monkey Dews. <laughs> Monkey Dews. When monkey we re- see, monkey do. Monkey see, monkey do. When we return, we're going to do pop culture, sports, have some legal news, some local news, all radio superbity on Real Talk 1160. Barracuda. Eric Dieters, the greatest multitasker in the history of mankind. During breaks, I work, I text, I read, I review. All right, you ready for some pop culture at following Barracuda? Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, there are two women in this world who I will admit I've had crushes on from afar, and uh, 
if given the opportunity as a single man, if they were interested in uh, me, I would have been happy to escort them around town as a gentleman. Jessica Simpson and Jennifer Aniston. In fact, my wife, I think, is an improved model of Jennifer Aniston. Uh, I got to ask you this, though. What is it about these two ladies they can't keep a man? I'm just saying there's something <laughs> weird about it. Now, do you think Jessica Simpson posing pregnant and naked on the cover of Elle magazine in the Demi Moore style with the boobs covered up but clearly showing her weight gain of being a beautiful pregnant woman? And we all know there's a pregnant women are beautiful and full of glow. Do you think that's going to increase or decrease her chances of keeping her man? How much money did she get paid for that little endeavor? And I don't know. And all I can tell you this is I will never look at her the same. I, I don't watch reality television, but I watched the news clip once when her and Nick Lachey, uh, you know, did their little show where she admitted that she farted a lot. I was like, <laughs> man, that's a killer, man. TMI. Too much information. American Idol last night paid tribute to Whitney Houston. And I tell you right now, there's a little 16-year-old girl that cranked out, I will always love you. I was like, whoa. Give her first place. Uh, the Girl Scouts turn 100 this year. Really? The founder of the Girl Scouts, by the way, because we went to Savannah a couple years ago in spring, my wife and I just, we never been to Savannah, so we drove down to Savannah. Neat town. Juliet Gordon Lowe was the founder of the Girl Scouts, and she was from Savannah. Really? I saw the house where she lived, where she, the Girl Scout headquarters were. Well, that explains the reason they've got those cookies called Savannah Smiles. That is correct. Ah, I didn't know that. Before she died in 1927, T.C., and you can see by the video cast, I know this from memory, she had recruited 160,000 little girls. Wow. You know, it's amazing. You know what we ought to do? Hey, write this down. We're going to have Bulldog Nation. We are going to use, we're going to start having Bulldog Nation patches. Bulldog Nation patches for Bulldog Nation members. This is a patch. <laughs> I whack somebody for the Godfather. <laughs> uh, I wrote a blog entry. You get your little blog patch. Um, you get your radio call-in patch. Um, the Super Oracle patch. The Oracle patch. We got patches. We need, we need to follow the example of the Girl Scouts and have patches. We don't need no stinking patches. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, her nickname, they thought she was crazy, was called Crazy Daisy. Now why did they call her that? I don't know how because insulting. Because she organized little girls? And the Girl Scouts now number 3.2 million little girls. Scouts honor. My wow. wife was a Girl Scout. My, I can tell you right now, my wife was probably like the perfect Girl Scout. And she's just, like follows rules. Yeah. She, you know, she, I, she, oh man, she's probably the perfect little, I bet you she got every damn patch. You know, um, we were talking about uh, Carlo, is Carlo Slim? Carlo Slim. Carlo Slim. Was well, he now, a Girl Scout? No, I was just thinking the Girl Scouts, about this time of the year, all the money that they're making from Girl Scout cookies, they've got to be in Forbes list somewhere. They ought to be. You know? And not only that, as I pointed out, how come they start selling cookies beginning of Lent? I think they need to adjust this a little bit. Christmas time maybe would be a better time. Well, you can't walk around, can you? No, well, they figured that we're going to wait long enough. We'll not do them in January because everyone's trying to stick to the New Year's resolution. By February, everyone said, ah, screw this. I'm not going to That's a weight. good point. And I guess when the weather's <laughs> warm so they can go out walking around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, more irritating phrases they had that list we're compiling. Vet him. If I hear one more, we're going to vet him. Breitbart on Obama. We're going to vet him. What the hell's vet mean? Took the dog to the vet. And it is what it is. That's another irritating phrase. Yeah. Uh, Chuck E. Cheese. A parent, these parents didn't realize they left their three-year-old until they saw the news. <laughs> now, I want to tell you something. What? I, 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 I kind of feel sorry for them because crazy stuff can happen. I got left once at home. Well, you got 11 kids. They, you, know, you could leave one behind. But let me tell you something. <laughs> you get lost in the balls, okay? <laughs> Can you blame a parent if you lose one in the balls? <laughs> wow. Now, there's there's a movie there. There's a Disney movie at Chuck E. Cheese alone. Hey, I got to tell you something, Foister, about those balls. First of all, remember that there was a study that came about how, like, nasty and germs all those oh, balls are. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, they are. Ooh, they are. Well, get this. My wife, this was, this was a pretty brilliant idea, dude. Pr pretty brilliant idea, bought, like, 50 of those balls, Yeah. put them in Riley's crib. Uh-huh. Riley loves it. Yeah. And a little nine-month-old little girl has her own little ball 
Yeah. Now, see, ben. that's that's fine because she's the only baby exactly. in there. Exactly. That's perfect. I will not let Riley go to the public Chuck E. Cheese ball. And you should. Infection the bank or whatever it is. Because you know why? There, there are no requirements that a child playing in those balls has to be potty trained. You know what, ladies and gentlemen? I'm an anti-regulation guy, but I think we need the federal government to pass some laws on Chuck E. Cheese's balls. <laughs> People wonder why I do stand-up comedy, because I'm just funny. All right, sports news. <laughs> funny looking, funny talking. Bronson Aurora, I like this guy. I met him at Reds Fest two years ago, and he started telling some funny stories. He's a cool dude, man. He's a man's man and a lady's man. He pitched three innings yesterday. I hope he rebounds from last year. League tournaments begin today. Bearcats play Georgetown at two. Xavier plays Dayton at 9 on Friday. UK plays at 1 on Friday. If you work for Eric Dieters and you're a UK fan, you're off tomorrow afternoon. And I know which one of you are fans and which ones of you aren't. Maria, you're not going anywhere. Was she a Cardinal fan? (laughs) She's a Giants fan. New York Giants. Do you believe the Bulldog secretary's name is Maria Dallas? And she's from (laughs) New York and is a New York Giants fan. She can just stick me with every single day about her my Cowboys. The Ugh. ironies of life. The ironies of life. Oh, OSU, which is the Buckeyes. You didn't know I could do an English voice. Icon. OSU, 9 p.m. on Friday. The Buckeyes. NBA, the Wizards <laughs> upset the Lakers. Jack Nicholson went on a tirade after the game. No one has seen him. Uh... Did you ever hear about him? Uh, we're early hour. We don't want to talk about too much. So, uh, the Heat defeated the Hawks. Uh, Peyton Manning wouldn't he love to play for the, uh, the, the Miami, where he would have, get to play the Patriots and the Jets and all those teams in the East two times a year? And they can pay him in sunshine. He could pay him in sunshine. And you know why not start planning your retirement, Florida baby? Yeah, I'm licensed to practice law in Florida, so. Uh, you know, for a minute there, I thought I was going to have to move to Florida and set up my law practice. <laughs> little, I like, I little like suspension humor there. I think I'm down to 46 days. Why don't they have a reality show? Peyton Manning in Miami, you know, the comeback. You the know, comeback. You know, the, the, name, the uh, nerve uh, test or whatever he's going through. And the World, the world Golf Championships are in Durham, Florida today. Thursday through Sunday. Hey, and guess what, Chuck Holbrook? Your good pal, Brett Farr, who I used to like until <laughs> his Green Bay jet to buy. I mean, Brett Farr came up like a spoiled little kid. Hey, Brett, take a lesson, although it's too late, from Peyton Manning to how you leave your team. Class. Hey, yeah, he did. You know what? Let's face it. You got a 14-year career with the team. You might as well. You know what it is. It's like that song that Clint Black, I think it was Clint Black, We Can't Have a Bad Goodbye. It was a duet. I don't want a bad yeah. goodbye. You know, if you've been with somebody for 14 years, you need a good goodbye. People getting divorced should remember that. <laughs> you need a good goodbye, not a bad goodbye. Of course, every day this guy's still going to wake up and say, I'm Peyton Manning. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I uh, got something from insurance claims and the storm damage. This is from an email that my insurance expert sent me. Uh I'll guess many homeowners were not properly insured to the value required by the co-insurance clause. If the structure is underinsured, that means the content's personal property limit would have been higher because the content... Just read it on my newsletter and blog. It doesn't make good radio. Uh, <laughs> That's a, didn't pass the Laverne and Shirley rule, did it? Did not, you are a wise man. It did not pass the Laverne and Shirley rule. Um, bullying. I've always stood up to bullies. I mean, just, I mean, I just, I can't stand bullies. I fight bullies every day. Bullies figuratively and literally. I think I'm going to take up this cause. I got to find out like, where's the bullying, you know, fundraising for bullies, legal work for people that are standing up to bullies. Lori Taylor suggested that that would be a great cause for the bulldog, isn't it? The bulldog, the bulldog bulldog fighting bullying. I like that. Uh, the Norway killer in legal news. Uh, Anders Bering Breivik is that jack wagon that shot sixty, shot and killed 69 on that island. Set for trial in April. And you know what, TC? He can't get the death penalty. You kill 69 people 
and he's not going to fry. Something's wrong with that. Something's wrong with that. Uh, a reason against private – well, we'll come back. You're, you're going to love this story. This is an incredible story about private prison systems in the United States. Oh. And, the, and we have some uh, solar news. Solar news. We're being bombarded on Real Talk 1160. <laughs> And this weekend, get back in the garden with Denny McEwen, Saturday morning at 8 o'clock, 8 to 10 on Real Talk 1160. And now, back to the Bulldog. I'm rejecting Chuck Holbrook's request to make Brett Farr an oracle for not caring what anybody thinks, just like me. <laughs> That's a pretty good argument. You know, Brett's got that glory day syndrome, you know? You know what? I got one more Super Bowl in me. You know, know who, it. you know who else? I'll bet you. I am not kidding you. I'll bet you he's taking antidepressant pills. Michael Jordan. How do you go from being the greatest athlete, the greatest basketball player on the planet, all that adulation, all that stuff, and now you are the man- general manager of the Charlotte Bobcats who's like won two games this year? Yeah, he says, give me a ball. I can play. I can still do it. I mean, he just – remember he tried it with the Wizards. Yeah. That was like one year too long. It was like – I remember being a little boy listening to Willie Mays. You know, Willie Mays' final year, he, he like yeah. played a year too, too long. Right, right. The just, say hey kid. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, there was a story a while back. I think it was up in uh, Jersey or Pennsylvania. I think it was in Pennsylvania where a judge got nailed for taking bribes from a private correctional facility for juveniles, and he was, like, putting kids in that prison because he was getting paid to fill up the prison. Wow. Sick. Well, get this. From the USA Today today. At a time when states are struggling to reduce bloated prison populations and tight budgets, a private prison management company is offering to buy prisons in exchange for various considerations, including a controversial guarantee that the governments maintain a 90% occupancy rate for at least 20 years. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me do the Laverne and Shirley on that one. That means... We'll buy your prison, but you better make sure that that prison is filled up 90% to capacity for 20 years. Uh, hey, uh, hey, listen, man, uh, our county, we're down to 80%. you got to send some people to jail. Okay. That, that is why, ladies and gentlemen, and you know I'm an anti-government guy. Guess what, folks? Housing prisoners is a government function and should be done by the government. So you're going to penalize people for keeping the crime rate down. <laughs> I mean, that's what's going to happen, yep, right? Yep. Yep. It's incredible. It's terrible. 250 million proposals circulated by Nashville-based Corrections Corporation of America has been blasted by state officials. Yeah, I'd say. Hey, how about our new congressman, uh, Winstrup? He's just like Rand Paul. You know, when Rand Paul, the Tea Party darling, he yeah. went from like an unknown Bowling Green doctor to national celebrity. And he looks like George Clooney, doesn't he? Yeah. Winstrup does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Winstrup was on Neil Cavuto on Fox News yesterday. And I'm wow. sure he's been on other shows. He's the media darling. Uh, in the world news, Sarkozy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, this should tell you a little bit about the problems that we're having in this country. Sarkozy, the prime minister of France, has said, we have too many foreigners. France does. Really? He is saying, we've got too many foreigners. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, in the spirit of Ellis Island, in the spirit of the Statue of Liberty, there is nothing wrong with legal immigration, and we are a melting pot. But what has to happen is there has to be that big Laverne and Shirley rule violation, assimilation, that where people come here become part of America. I don't know where this began and where it started, but somewhere along the lines, we've decided that people can come to America and just be whatever they are rather than becoming Americans. And that's what's happening. I mean, you know. There's a trade-off. You know, everybody just come on in. But then, you know, I, I, will, I never will understand the Hispanic voicemails, the Hispanic phone books. I mean, we didn't do that for the Germans. We didn't do that for the Italians. We didn't do it. I, I don't understand why we're doing it. I, and I think it's a huge mistake. Huge mistake. Did you hear about that high school that got in trouble? They were playing at a predominantly Hispanic team, uh-huh. and they started shouting, USA, USA. Oh, the students did. Did they really? And the coach busted them. Oh, man. You can't do that. 
I, I can say that that's politically incorrect. It's politically incorrect, but it's also kind of funny. What do you expect from teenagers? You're right, right. Yeah, I mean, that's we would have done, we we done, done the same thing. We would have done yeah. the same thing. Not saying it's right, but <laughs> right. At 15, 16, <laughs> we'd have thought it was hilarious. Oh, USA, USA. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And silent. And silence. And si- silence. The sound of silence. Simon and Garfunkel. Boy, Simon and Garfunkel, they're depressed dudes, aren't they? <laughs> they're well, I they am a rock. I am an island. Um, I sounds am an icon. of silence. I mean, they were, they were depressed, dudes. A uh, solar storm began hitting her Earth at 5 a.m. today. I want to tell you right now, I got a tan just walking from my <laughs> office to my truck this morning. I noticed I turned brown. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, if you want to tan up, just go outside today. Uh, we are getting hit with particles from the sun. Get this, at 4 million miles per hour. Power grids, GPS, and airplane flights could be disrupted. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, by the way, I, I'm not going to make fun of her. You know how I made fun of Carrie, you know, when she first started working? And I made fun of Sarah. Yeah. Well, and they're still with you. I got a funny story with uh, the new girl, Molly. Uh-oh. I think the solar storm, all I'm going to say is I think the solar storm knocked her GPS out the other day. That's oh, all I'm going to really? say. If she's listening, she knows what I'm talking about. That's a great excuse for someone who doesn't want to be found today. Is it the only people that are allowed to get lost are men? Because we're jack wagons. We <laughs> think we can find whatever we need to find. Is that not true? Yeah, that's it. Men are the only ones allowed to get lost, not women. That's right. Women are supposed to be prepared. Uh, because we're not. In politics, I'm going to begin with something that I heard on the way in. Uh, and it was incredible. Washington Times show here on this radio station, they interviewed Jimmy Carter. Yeah. Jimmy, Jimmy. Now, a couple things that I thought were interesting. First of all, Jimmy Carter is a good man with a good heart. But he's the most naive jack wagon I've ever heard. He said that the Iran clerics have told him that they are not going to be messing around with nuclear weapons, and he thinks that they'll keep the, the, their word to him. Oh, really? Jimmy, come on. Also, that the Egyptians are going to maintain a good relation with Israel because they've promised him that, and he's confident they'll keep that promise too. Have you even been reading the New York Times, Jimmy? What the Iranians and what the Egyptians are saying, the uh, Muslim Brotherhood, they want to they want to both wipe out Israel. I see. If I was if I was Jimmy Carter, I'd be thinking, you know, the Iranians brought me down before. Oh, uh, bingo. I wouldn't trust them at all. Naive. Now, the one thing that he did say that I thought was funny is when I asked him about his advice for Barack Obama, his advice to Barack Obama was focus on what's be- best for the country, not about getting reelected. Ha-ha. Good answer. And we're going to get to that in a minute. But the first thing in politics today, and I'm just going to follow my blog and newsletter, Newt's arrogance. He, oh, by the way, I'm going to have a great rant today. Just, I don't know when I'm going to do it. It's when, like when I get that rant itch. It's like, it's an uncontrollable thing. TC sees it coming. Jacob sees it coming. It's like, <laughs> oh, my God, he's going to go with a rant. The eye twitch. Here it comes. Yeah. Uh, Newt's arrogance. He is saying with a straight face, he'd get out. If he thought Santorum could beat Romney. Are you kidding me, Newt? And by the way, folks, I like Newt, but he is an egomaniac. What would who would have won Michigan and Ohio if Newt wasn't in the race? Santorum. I mean, that is so obvious. So Newt is full of beans. Also, Georgia, who would have won Georgia? Santorum. Uh, Kentucky votes. Now, this is incredible. You know, we usually are left out. The election's already over. May 22nd, the Kentucky primary. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, we might get to vote. Uh, Dick Morris maintains that he doesn't think that uh, Romney will wrap it up till June the 6th, which is the date of the California GOP primary. That means, Kentuckians, we might get to vote May 22nd. Uh, what's next in the primary? March 10th, which is Saturday, Kansas. Guess who else is voting there at uh, TC? Virgin okay. Islands. You know what? I'd like to go to the Virgin Islands one day. Yeah. Maybe we should have a stag party field trip or something to the Virgin <laughs> Islands. Have to change the name of the islands, huh? Yes. Guam and the Northern Mariana Islands. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't know, and I, you know, I feel like I know 
America pretty good. Northern Mariana Islands. Where the hell is that, TC? Uh, it's somewhere over there. March 13th. <laughs> good one. March 13th, which is next Tuesday. <laughs> That's a good one, man. I just don't. You ought to be a stand-up guy. You ought to be my <laughs> warm-up act. Uh, Alabama, Hawaii, Mississippi, and American Samoa. Now I know where that is. That's over there. <laughs> Speaking of a feel-good not song, uh, when we come back, I'm going to discuss President Obama's fundraising on Real Talk 1160. Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. Jimmy Cotta. Mr. Naive. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, if you go into my law office and go in the men's restroom and you uh, do your business standing up, you're going to stare right at this quote framed on the wall. You get more with a kind word and a loaded gun than a kind word alone. Al Capone. Last night when I was on the throne doing my business and reading my American history textbook, which I read every year from cover to cover to refresh my memory because I don't have a photographic mind. I wasn't blessed with that. I was blessed with lots of things by the good Lord, but a photographic mind is not one of them. People forget that Lexington and Concord occurred in 1775 before we declared the Declaration of Independence. Also, Breeds Hill before the Declaration. Something else happened before the Declaration of Independence, ladies and gentlemen, the American jury. It was called Ethan Allen, the Green Mountain Boys, taking Fort Ticonderoga. And there was a bookseller, yes, a little bookseller named Henry Knox, who decided to take it upon himself to start reading about artillery. And let this be a lesson to you folks that remember my, one of my mantras, one of my maxims that don't uh, believe that these quote unquote experts in Washington know more about things than you and I, Henry Knox didn't know anything about artillery. So he started reading books. He started studying it. Well, Henry Knox decided, you know what, to help out Washington who had just become the commander-in-chief in the Second Continental uh, Convention, he decides to go to Fort Ticonderoga, and they take all of those big, massive cannon from Fort Ticonderoga in the dead of winter over a mountain with oxen, and he drags, Henry Knox drags the cannon from Fort Ticonderoga all the way up to Dorchester Heights in Boston. So one morning in the springtime, good old General Howe the Brits looks up on the hill, and they're staring down upon him, our cannon from Fort Ticonderoga that could blow him and his British fleet to smithereens. You know what happened, folks? I know you haven't heard this story before. Here's what happened. General Howe sends a message to Washington with a deal deal. And the deal deal is this. Howe says to Washington, if you let us get on our ships and get the hell out of Dodge or Boston, we will not burn the city. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, think about that. Washington could have hammered away at Howe with those big guns that Henry Knox dragged all the way from Fort Ticonderoga. Or he could not and save Boston from being burned. Standoff. Washington agreed. Howe put all his soldiers on the ships and left. Left Boston. George Washington evacuated the Brits from Boston without firing a shot. (gasps) How? How? Capone's words. You get more with a kind word and a loaded gun, or in this case, loaded cannon from Fort Ticonderoga, than simply, um, now what do you think would have happened, folks, if George Washington would have met with General Howe and said, without the cannons, 
shooting right down at uh, Howe and saying, uh, General Howe, will, will you please leave Boston? Please leave Boston. Don't burn Boston. Will you just please leave? Versus having the can. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, that's a story you've never heard before, and it is an example of why you need a strong military and in your own lives, folks. If you got cards, you can play. Play them. If you don't, don't. Because you get more with a kind word and a loaded gun. My point, Jimmy Carter obviously misses this point every single time. Do you think you get something from Iran without having your fleet right outside Iran ready to blow them to smithereens? Are you kidding me? Russia. Do you think we got Russia to give up because we said... Please don't build any more intercontinental missiles. Will you, will you please not do that? You negotiate from strength. And you know what? If you don't have strength, you bag. I can tell you right now, in my cases, let's say I got a case where it is, it is a great case. I got a videotape of a cop doing something illegal. I got a doctor who screws up and the next doctor says he screwed up. I got a strong case. I'm able to say I want $100,000. I want $200,000. And there's other cases I got where I guess like, man, will you give me a couple thousand so I can get the hell out of Dodge? <laughs> In your own life, you do it. You know, if T.C., is negotiating for a pay raise, and we don't have any other producers to do his job, TC can say, hey, man, I want more money. If you don't give me more money, I'm out of here. No more green water commercials for Bulldog. And if there's people lined up at the door that can do TC's job, TC's got to say, man, please, you know, can I stay around? Yeah, I'll take the crumbs. I mean, it, 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 am I not? Yeah, this that's is what, it. what I'm saying is the truth. But now, Jimmy Carter never got it. No, and, and, and if I were Jimmy Carter, I'd have a vengeance against Iran. I would, oh, I would be, call, oh. I'd be on the phone with John McCain. <laughs> what do you think about this, John? Let's let's get together. I, that's what I. But by the way, I bet Knox was furious with Washington after lugging that thing. What? <laughs> we're not going to fire it. Hey, you know, you know, we could do the uh, rest of the story. Henry Knox became. Uh, George Washington's numero uno artillery officer. By the way, Alexander Hamilton also worked in artillery. And oh. and Henry Knox became the first Secretary of War. We had a Secretary of War back then. Really? The first Secretary of War under Washington. Well, how about that? The bookseller. His job was to lug the cannon around. With oxen. And you ought to look at the map. I mean, uh, Lake Champlain, where Fort Ticonderoga is, all the way to... Uh, Dorchester Heights in Boston. It isn't like a, a few miles up the road here. Right, right. In what, I don't years. know. I don't know if you saw it, and I don't. In the John Adams uh, biography they did on HBO, I don't know if this was historically accurate or not. But they have Henry Knox with those oxen pulling those going oh, by, really? going by. Uh, it might have been because it's on the way going by John Adams's house, yeah. and Abigail's out there saying, "Hello, Mister Knox. Hello, Abigail." <laughs> he's he's pulling his oxen and the cannon in the mud as he goes by. That's a great scene in that movie. All right, the president, ladies and gentlemen, the American jury. You've heard me say this before. We don't need saints. We just need great men. We need great leaders. We need men of honor. Uh, in the you not in the USA today. Uh, there is a chart, and when I when I look at this chart, it, there's something that leaps out at you, and what leaps out at you is where our country has gone wrong, where the honor has been lost. It's sad. Uh, total fundraisers headlined by presidents through March 6, their fourth year in office. In other words, the election year, the election year. Jimmy Carter, by March the 6th, from January 1 to March the 6th, 49 fundraisers. Ronald Reagan, 75 fundraisers. George H.W. Bush, you see a trend here, 109 fundraisers. Now, this is interesting. Bill Clinton, 96. But we get right back on the trend George W. Bush, 134 fundraisers. Barack Obama, 191. He's blown the doors off Bush with 134. Now, you know that I've said that George Bush 
was the worst president in the history of the United States until Barack Obama came along, which made Bush number two. Do you think there's a correlation here, folks, that their focus is on attending fundraisers instead of doing a good job as the president of the United States? I'm telling you right now, if you're the president of the United States and you're doing a great job, you don't need to attend a bunch of fundraisers because the good job and the people's got a job and they're humming along and all the national television coverage and news media, everybody can say, man, that president, he's doing a great job. You, you can't be beaten. My opinion, TC, if you do a great job as president, it speaks for itself as far as getting reelected. That could be true. That could be true. But look, look at the, the numbers that you had. Um, Ronald Reagan had more fundraisers than Jimmy Carter. That's not consistent with that with that line of thinking, though. No, no, no. That was he. That wasn't when he ran against Carter. That was it. What I'm trying to say is, in recent in the in the last couple decades, uh-huh. our presidents have focused on raising money for reelection versus just doing a damn good job. And the good and job would in, get them. And it's gotten increasingly worse. Yeah, yeah. 191 and since January first. The only people who are working are the people doing the I'm, catering. I'm going to do the math when we come back on Real Talk 1160. And make sure you listen up for Mike Huckabee. The Huckabee Report at 830 this morning on Real Talk 1160. And now, back to the Bulldog. Ladies and gentlemen of the American jury, i got to give credit to this judge who I heard use these words, and maybe he borrowed them from somebody else. But Judge Doug Stevens was a retired, he's now a retired Kenton Circuit judge, and I always told him he should have been a federal judge. He had a federal judge look about him, sternness about him, but he was very fair. He was one of those judges that was stern but extremely fair. And uh, he had some issues with the uh, Kenton County felony prosecutor at the time, and he said publicly, this was in the newspaper, and he said in the courtroom, I heard him say it in the courtroom, he goes, I weep. I weep for the citizens of Kenton County. I said, man, that was good stuff. I weep for America. I weep for America. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, you've got a president of the United States attending 191 fundraisers since January 1. He has surpassed by 33% the Jack Wagon Bush. This comes out to 2.89. Let's make it three, folks, can we? Your president of the United States attends an average of three fundraisers a day. Now, I want to tell you something. Some of those are all across the country, some of those are in Washington. If your president is going to three fundraisers a day, and you can even throw in since January, I do believe we had a trip to Martha's Vineyard. I do believe we had a trip. Was Australia last year? I don't know. But ladies and gentlemen of the American jury, we have a lazy damn president who is a liar, he's a hypocrite. Did you hear his, his comments the last few days? He talks about how, you know, we don't need politics. We, what a lion sack of excrement. This guy goes to three fundraisers a day. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, true story. I don't go to many social events. And the reason why is I got limited time and my time has to be focused on my clients. So I don't attend bar functions. I don't attend fundraisers. I don't attend parties. I don't attend those functions. I'm either working, sleeping, spending time with my wife and my kids. My priorities are straight. I don't have time. I think about in my own life, ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, if I attended three fundraisers a day, okay, I live in Independence. 
My guess is I got a 30-minute drive to, a 30-minute drive from. If I stay an hour at each one, that's two hours of my time. If I go to three of them, I guess I could go from one spot to the other. But you're talking about spending. And this is if the fundraisers are in your neck of the woods. And just think the President of the United States has security details that have to accompany him. He's spending five or six hours a day, folks, average, going to fundraisers. Well, he's sleeping, right? I guarantee you this president gets eight hours sleep. When is he doing work to try to improve this country? You should be outraged. And you know what messes, you know what, we got to worry about, if you're one of those 10% independent voters that's going to decide this election, as an end, because I know the Republicans are going to vote for the nominee, and all you freeloader Democrats and liberal uh, folks are going to vote for Obama no matter what. How do you ask, how do you go in that voting booth and vote for the re-election of a president of the United States? who goes to three fundraisers a day instead of doing the work that's required of the president. I weep for America. Now, I jack wagon him up again today for something else he does. TRICARE Health is the health insurance for the military. I learned this morning, paying attention to what's going on in the world, as I always do, that the military rates for TRICARE Health are going through the roof. I heard like for a colonel, it was like $500 premium is going up to like $2,000. Hazard pay has been cut and is going to be cut some more. You know what hazard pay is? That's the pay that a soldier gets when he's in a war zone. Ladies and gentlemen of the American jury, it almost makes me want to cry. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, you have a first lady and a president hanging out in Hawaii for 17 days. You got a first lady skiing on the slopes of Aspen, going on the talk show circuit. You got a president attending three fundraisers a day, average. And they're having concerts with B.B. King and Mick Jagger. At the White House, and they're cutting veterans' health benefits. They're cutting soldiers' hazard pay. You know what? I called for an armed march on Washington. And part of that was, it's never, and and I'm serious, folks, it's not going to change until that happens. Now, obviously, ladies and gentlemen of Bulldog Nation and American Jury, you're not ready for that. Only 20 signed up, so I canceled it. But you write it down. Just like at 9.36 p.m. on election night, I was the one, and it wasn't just some flipping thing. I had an inside source that Romney was going to win Ohio. I'm the first guy in the country that called Ohio for Romney. I'm the first guy in the country that says an armed revolution is going to have to happen in this country for the country to change its course. You've got a president that acts like he's out there for the little guy. My ass. How do you justify it? Bill Atkins, my liberal friend running for Congress. Denny Allardine, my liberal friend lawyer. How do you justify your support in voting for this president? I haven't even brought up how you justify it when he submits a $1.3 trillion, three times the market value of Apple Computer as a budget deficit on every front. This president is bad news. I've still got coming up, folks, the Breitbart video. And how about this? The inmates at Gitmo got a $700,000 soccer field. 
Is it a little bit of grass and a couple and a couple goals enough? A seven hundred thousand dollar soccer field, and you know why? Because if it's seven hundred and fifty thousand, you got to get congressional approval. So the administration, hey George Will. You see what I mean, you jack wagon? Oh, if we get the Senate, everything will be okay. No, no, no. The power of the executive branch using their discretion is incredible. How does that make you feel? He's cutting veterans pay. He's cutting hazard pay. He's cutting veterans benefits who are dying in Iraq. And he's building a $700,000 soccer field in Gitmo. Why, he and the First Lady are attending concerts, three fundraisers a day, talk shows, Hawaii, Aspen ski trip. I've said it before, and I will say it again, and I don't care what people say. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. You should hate them. And those that say, oh, that's too strong, Bulldog. Hate talk, hate talk. Kumbaya, my ass. What's your language? On Real Talk Club 6. Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. Uh, I think we got a green water commercial. I, I'm not sure, but... It's vintage from the 1970s. We pulled one, an old one, an archive. Ladies and gentlemen, ACDC. One of my favorite songs. By the way, I got a text message from a member of Bulldog Nation. Who says, man, you got a lot of haters out there, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, on, on these uh, blogs. And, of course, you know the story that they're talking about. You know what I told him? <laughs> I said, let me see here. I have a radio talk show. I'm the best and most popular lawyer in the tri-state now. I have, I'm hiring lawyers. I got TC as a friend. I have businesses. I got Jacob as a friend. My children are healthy. My wife is healthy. My granddaughter is w- healthy. Every place I go with my wife, I'm with the prettiest girl. Keep on hating, folks. <laughs> isn't that? I mean, isn't that great? Isn't that the great that attitude to have? Why that do you? Why do you worry about it? You know, everybody's got haters. Yeah. Who gives a dang? The Hate bigger, all you want. The bigger you are, the more haters Ab- you have. Absolutely. Because yeah. guess what, haters? I got Bulldog Nation got my back. And TC. That's right. All right, TC, you ready for your green water commercial? Yeah, this vintage. We pulled the this one. Had to dust this one. I up. like Say, vintage. How about a nice Hawaiian punch? Sure. Anything but that awful green water. That stuff tastes like shit. Oh. <laughs> Great tasting, slimy, living green water keeps you healthy. Just don't badmouth it. Available at Queen Kick. You, you know. You know what, TC? I think it's funny that uh, you think I'm like a hater. All of the green water commercials involve somebody getting punched. Well, you know. <laughs> I mean, you notice that, Jack? All the green water, co- you know, Jesse got punched. Yeah, that's right. Well, Andy he, Rooney got punched. Yeah. Shanna, you know, Shanna. I felt bad hitting the girl, you know. <laughs> that was, I think that might be my, I like that Hawaiian she, one. She wouldn't sing it right, you know. So I, Hey, come on, straighten up. Yeah. By the way, speaking of hating. I'm gonna I'm gonna test you, TC, because oh. I think you're you, you really do represent the typical American uh, male. Hater. I think. Oh, okay. I crack up at all those people that think everybody's supposed to get along and everybody's supposed to at all time and everything else. Okay, now I'm gonna break the word down for you called hate. Okay. Now there's people say, "Oh man, you shouldn't hate, man. You shouldn't hate." Now people hate me. Now I'm not, I'm talking about that. That's just fine. You hate hate all you want. I want to tell you something. What is wrong with rational hate? In other words, hate which is deserved. Examples. I'm going to go give you examples, all right? A pedophile. Should we not hate a pedophile? You're asking me what I think? Yes. I have a problem with that because a a good example, I understand exactly what you're saying, and I agree with with where you're going with that, but a guy like that is ill. A pedophile is sick. Uh, That person has a – but, yeah, I hate the act. I hate what they do. Well, I'm just saying I I hate the act, but I hate the person too, sorry. So I hate hate a pedophile. Now, let me tell you something else. The the number the numero isn't the one it's always used as Hitler. Everybody gets in trouble. Oh, you don't mention it. Don't compare it. All right. Should we not 
hate Hitler, TC. I, I, yes, I, I see why. We Should we not Hitler. hate Stalin, who killed more people than Hitler? Yes. However... I think more importantly, we should try to hate the sin and not the sinner. See, I disrespect. This is the difference between TC and I. I hate the sin and the sinner. <laughs> now, not I hate ne- what they do. And by I- the way, and not all things. Like somebody robs a bank, I'm not necessarily going to hate them. What I'm trying to say, ladies and gentlemen of the American jury, is that hate is okay. And, you know, wrong, misdirected hate is wrong. Like if you hate somebody that you shouldn't hate, what? Well, that's, that's wrong. But I'm telling you right now, some hate is deserved and i think that when you got a president of the united states who is flying around the country three fundraisers a day his wife's going to aspen talk show circuit they go 17 days to hawaii they go up to martha's vineyard they have a uh, concerts with mick jagger and bb king at the white house living it up on taxpayers dime cutting military benefits hazard pay health benefits Sorry, folks. I'm going to hate him. And I think it's deserved hate. There. Next. <laughs> got I, got, off chest. I got a buddy who says he's got a customer selling a 1981 Rolls Royce for $16,000. So Bulldog Nation member, if you're a Bulldog Nation member doing well, and you want to buy a 1981 Rolls Royce for $16,000, give me a call or give me an email. You got good tires? Who's got, we got a car on the line? Yeah, yeah. Say something witty or wise. Bulldog, I just wanted to let you know that, uh, and let the Bulldog Nation know that. Oh, this is John Bick. This is John Bick from Rocky Automotive. I forgot all about you. Who did you think it was? I was wondering why I was sitting on the radio, uh, the phone for 10 minutes waiting to get on the radio. Well, 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 guess what, John Bick? You lost a bet. (laughs) Romney won, and I called it first. I know you did, and you are an honorable man because you could have jack wagon me up all day for doubting your political superbity. I like so you, John Bick from you. Rocky Automotive. <laughs> that's why. That's why I don't jack. I don't. I make a pledge. I don't. By the way, I don't jack wagon any uh, advertisers up anymore either. I mean, <laughs> you never have to worry about me saying an ill will about Rocky Automotive. Well, if I do anything stupid, you have my permission to, <laughs> to jack wagon me without any uh, advertising repercussions. Okay? Does, does Robke Automotive have any special deals going on that the ladies and gentlemen of the American jury need to go get? Well, I can tell you this. We just partnered with Auto Trader for their trade-in marketplace. And this tool is really cool. And we're going to have a link on our website in the next day or two. Which That's is like a great idea. Com. Yeah, all the people got to do. Everybody always wants to know what their trade is worth. They can click on this link off our website. If they describe their vehicle accurately, it'll give them a guaranteed value, which means they can walk in, bring us their car, and we'll stroke them a check right there on the spot for what it says it's worth. They got to be accurate. So as long as they tell us about the death defender, they'll get a check for what it's worth. Well, I know you, besides all the full services that you do from maintenance to auto body and, and used cars, that sounds like a great idea for you. It is a great idea because it's always the hang-up on a car deal. I want to know what my car's worth, and there's not a lot of places for people to find out. They go to kbb.com, that gets them close. There's never been a tool like this for people that they can put it in and know that that is going to be the amount the check's going to be for. It's great, and it's at gorocky.com. And then uh, we also want to let you know, thanks for sponsoring the newsletter, and we finally put that coupon in front instead of in the back. And nobody can find an oil change for nine ninety five. So if they clip that coupon off the Bulldogs newsletter, come on in the Rocky. We'll get you handled. Best oil change in town. Did you hear that, folks? Nine ninety nine for an oil change. Nine ninety five. Nine ninety five. The coupon on my newsletter. And if you want to get my newsletter, just email me at eric at ericdeters dot com, and we'll add you to it. Thank you, John Big from Rocky Automotive. Any final words or concession speeches? No concession speeches, just uh, glad to be a part of the Bulldog Nation. Thank you, John Bick. He's the best. He's my buddy. I'm going to Rob Key after the show. He comes to my comedy shows. He's a supporter. They sponsor the newsletter. I good like Rob Automotive. He's a good guy. What do you think about that I even story? like him more than Kurtzman Plastic Surgery, who brings oh. breast implants to us. He's going to brought donuts, but you know that was a nice visual. I'm just teasing Dr. Kurtzman. I love you too, man. It's like that old phrase. My best friend. I'm the your best friend. I thought you were the best friend. True story. A guy in my wedding party, the first time I got married, yeah. was mad that he wasn't the best man instead of the one that was about my best man. He was the second best man. I was like, come on, dude. <laughs> 
hurt that's, his feelings. That sounds like women, doesn't it? Yeah. That sounds like women, you know. They're all my best friends. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't the first bridesmaid. I was the second bridesmaid. I, I want to knock some things out here real quick before we come back and talk about the Breitbart video release. Uh, Mitt Romney's got 415 delegates, Santorum 178, Newt 107, Ron Paul 46. They've got to get to 1,144. Dennis Kucinich, I can't believe I forgot to mention this, he lost his seat in redistricting. He's kind of an entertaining liberal. Sarah Palin admitted she voted for Newt in Alaska. Rush is fired back. I love what he done. He spun. He says, you know what? Listeners, he's telling the listeners, he goes, we have a show not because of the advertisers, but because of you listeners. Guess what, folks? These advertisers don't want your business. That's brilliant. I he's love that. He's blowing smoke. No, I like that idea. Uh, why more government sucks? A Michigan woman, you've seen this story already, but i got to report it in case you haven't, won $1 million. She took 750000 lump sum, which, and then after taxes it was 500000 and she still receives food stamps. Okay, now what's, what's wrong with that picture? Oh, God. She goes, where do well, you start? She goes, I don't think it's a problem because I don't have any income. The new iPad, it was announced today. She gets, has bills and she has two houses. I know. New iPad, four ninety nine to eight twenty nine. Uh, they announced goes on sale March sixteenth. Bob Evans is remodeling their forty eight uh, Cincinnati area restaurants. Consumer borrowing up seventeen point eight percent in January. Natural gas cars more going on sale. Twenty twelve Honda Civic. By the way, I'm all for natural gas cars. If you want to do some green, let's do natural gas cars. On my blog and newsletter, there's a lot of Toyota and Chrysler recalls. Check them out. And gas in California has hit $6. Whoa. Whoa. They like those numbers. Real Talk 1160. And remember, Real Talk 1160 is on Facebook. You can keep tabs of your favorite talk show host and listen to live streaming. Right here at Real Talk 1160, log on to Facebook.com slash Real Talk 1160 and join in. And now let's get back to the Bulldog. This is Eric Dieters, the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. If you own a small business or a big business, any business, I would welcome your advertising on Real Talk 1160. My radio superbity will make your business economic superbity. Uh, Breitbart video release. You know, Breitbart, before he died at the CPAC convention, I don't really care for Breitbart, to be honest with you. I thought he was kind of a weird dude. But anyway, he said that he had some videos uh, from Barack Obama's college days that he was going to air. Well, after the aftermath of his death, uh, they come out. Last night on Hannity, I watched Hannity for two reasons. There's somebody that, you know, is in radio that I can't mention their name was on there, so I listen, I watch, but also... Who and those imaginary friends. Imaginary friend. <laughs> uh, but here's the deal. A video uh, that, that, that shows an audio and video Barack Obama teaching, or not teaching, but speaking at an outside rally protest at Harvard Law School when he was a law student there. And he says on this video, quote-unquote... Open up your hearts and minds to the teachings of Derek Bell. Bell was at the rally, uh, and he basically is a white hater. Derek Bell is a white hater. You can Google Derek Bell, Harvard Law. You can find out all about him. I mean, it's incredible. And get this. Professor Ogletree, who was as an ally of uh, Barack Obama's, admitted on another video that they hid this tape in 2008. Now, if you're wondering why the president practices social economic division and race division, and he goes on the video, he goes on YouTube and says, you know, I'm forming African Americans for Barack Obama. I mean, that is incredible. I, you know what? I, I, I am not kidding you, folks. I wish Mitt Romney would form a group that says whites for Romney, just to make the point. Now, he's not going to. Everybody's like, oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. But Derek Bell, you talk about misplaced hate. Derek Bell is like a radical white hater. And you got Barack Obama in law school. Now, some of you might say, well, it doesn't mean. Let me tell you something, folks. If you trace me back to law school, who I am as a person, my views and everything else. Now, sure, sometimes things change. Guess what, folks? I'm the same guy. I am. I'm the same guy as in law school. And and then the fact that they tried to hide it. And everybody says, oh, well, this is different. And you got John McCain who's bashing uh, the president for some of the things he's doing. I'm thinking, yeah, John, how come you didn't do it back then? 
And I, I'm not going to say this on the radio, but I'm putting on my newsletter and blog. I'm going to bait you. I put a bulldog note to this story about the video, which I think you'll find interesting. I think you'll find interesting. But I, I just I just don't get it. And, and apparently there's more. And you are what you are, folks. You are what you are. I'm a farm boy. Sorry. TC, where'd you grow up? Right here in Cincinnati. Yeah, but in what, the suburbs. Yeah, but what suburb? Oh, Forest Park. Don't you feel like you're kind of a product of Forest Park? I do. You're yeah. like representative of Forest Park? Proud representative. Absolutely. Yeah. I like Forest Park. Good community. Go Chargers. Is that what they well, are, the Chargers? Well, that's what we used to be. They're Winton Woods School District I now, can't so. believe I've never asked you. By the way, I played uh, flag football up on Winton Woods' nice AstroTurf field. Uh, did you? What did you do in high school? Like, okay, like, were you a brainiac? I, I would think you were like a jokester. You were like one of the cool dudes. <laughs> were you an athlete? Because you're, you're in Boy, fit. I've got some. What were you? I mean, seriously, what, what, uh, describe your high school career. Played football. I was on student council. Um, wrestled. And I was in the band. Those, those are the things I, that I enjoyed the most. Man, that, see, that, that, that kind of, you are diverse. You're a renaissance man. Student council, yeah. football, band. And wrestling. And wrestling. Yeah. Holy cow. All of what weight? Cool. What weight class did you wrestle? Oh man, I was at one nineteen. Man, but you're strong, dude. You're I solid. Just, you, you know who else is solid is Rob, the program director. Yeah, he was in here on the election night, and I, you know, hit him on this. My God, he said, you know, I'm proud. I benched three hundred once. He says back in high school, he got the boy, he got the bench up to five hundred pounds. Get out of here! And hitting him on the shoulder, I believe it. I would not want him to. Wow. He he came running at you like a bull. You're gone. Yeah, yeah. He's solid. Now his son's and he a, likes uh, hockey. His son's a uh, 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 MMA uh, is he? Wrestler. Yeah, yeah. I saw some videos. Pretty tough. Don't want to mess with him. Then. I wouldn't get. You know, I've him. retired. <laughs> Don't get any ideas, TC. I've retired. <laughs> uh, you know those energy loans, TC? Yeah. Uh, that everybody went after the um, secretary Chu. Well, get this. At one hearing last November seventeenth, Chu testified he had received nearly five hundred letters from members of Congress supporting the loan programs. We appreciate the support that the loan programs received from many members of Congress who have urged us to accelerate our efforts and fund worthy projects in their states. Congressman. You know, I, I think... In other, in other words, they're all jack wagons. You know, yeah. just so you know, I'm an yeah. equal opportunity, disgusted hater. Yeah. You know, Congress, the establishment... <laughs> of bipartisan the Republican hater. Party, Obama, the Democrat, I mean... You know what they were thinking? Well, maybe we'll have another dot-com boom with, <laughs> you know, with green energy projects. And with the exception of green water, none of them are working, really. And then this, the final story I got from TC. Thank you, TC. Cincinnati begins this month a much more exhaustive process of figuring out how citizens want their tax money. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not making this up. City Council on Wednesday, that was yesterday, agreed to pay the Denver Nonprofit Center for Policy Based Budgeting $100,000 to identify five to seven priorities on which residents, labor leaders, and others think. The city should focus. The priorities will be narrowed down through focus groups and public meetings. And quickly, the priorities are due by the end of April. The process will be closer to the way the city handled citizen input in the 70s and 80s, said Qualls. Council last month agreed to a new... Ladies and gentlemen of city of Cincinnati, didn't you elect the council to do this? It's the city council's job That's right. to identify priorities and act... Your city council is paying $100,000 for some jack wagons to tell them what their priorities should do. B. Give us the money, we'll tell you. No streetcar. We're done. <laughs> Bingo. Hey, $100,000 well spent if they listened. Exactly. We can walk away with $50,000 apiece. <laughs> we'll have to cut Jacob in. Okay. He'll give him five. Forty-five, forty-five. <laughs> Look, he's so focused, he didn't even hear us. John, uh, on a light, let's end on a light note. John right. Stewart is interviewing Bruce Springsteen for Rolling Stone, which is interesting. And John Stewart is coming to Cincinnati. You know, that he isn't it funny that he just tells you how Americans have changed? They want him. He's like considered the most reliable news source in America. 
You're he, kidding me. He is funny. Yeah. He does pick on everybody. Yeah, yeah. I like John Stewart. He 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 leans you know towards the liberal, of course, but he does. He'll jab them too. He'll jab them too. He'll get them both. But he's I li- funny. I, he is funny. I like John Stewart. And you know what? It just goes to show you like the difference. I mean, Bill Maher can have his funny moments. I've watched Bill Maher every once in a while, and some of the some of his commentary is funny. But you know what? The difference. I guess I'm closer to. Uh, I guess I'm a I'm a toss up between Stewart because I can be funny and I can also be mean like Mar. Is uh, <laughs> the difference is Stewart does it with a smile. Mar's right. mean. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Stewart's kind of funny. More, more tongue. He's a cheek. funny man. He's a funny man. Yeah, yeah. And as we now know, you can say whatever you want if you're a comedian, but if you're not a comedian, you're not allowed to. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> You know, oh, yeah. next time we say something really bad on the air, uh, TC, oh, we're comedians. That's we're right. We're comedians. Right. It's okay. We're allowed to. Yeah, as long as there aren't advertisers attached to it. <laughs> exactly. That's the thing. I'm done with the advertiser issue. We're all slaves to something, aren't we, TC? Well, I wouldn't put it that way. We enjoy. <laughs> pretty, we have a nice working harsh. relationship that's with pretty, our. That's pretty yeah. harsh. Yeah. Oh, John Biggs calling Guys, again. Dang, oh I, my gosh! I, I, Here mean, comes Kurtzman. I, I, do I gotta do this? <laughs> The thing is, though, we we have pretty cool clients. That's that's we the bottom do. line. I mean, you, John Orsleka, cool cat. Yeah, yeah. Don McCalkin, cool cat. Yeah, very good. Guy. Kurtzman, good guy. Bick, good guy. Yeah. Uh, John Horvath, tickets, good guy. Dave Neville, Edgewood Chiropractic, Grandview Tam. Dean Gregory, good guy. Yeah. Eric Dieters from Snappy Tomato Pizza, good guy. Yeah, he sure is, and they all put up with us. I so, got to give know. Andrew Ritter the, the credit on that one. He's our marketing dude. Okay. And Jeremy, my president, my younger brother is the president of Snappy Tomato Pizza. And by the yes. way, I'm going to go ahead and call him out publicly. My brother Jeremy never returns phone calls, emails, or text messages. Ooh. Drives me nuts. That is a social pofa. You know what? You should definitely respond to your <laughs> brother. Yeah. Jeez, oh, Pete. What's going on with that? Well, he, you know. He responded when he found out that my daughter hadn't paid the property taxes on the house he rents from him. That's one way to get his attention. We'll see if you respond to that. Don't worry, Jeremy. It's paid. When we come back tomorrow, we'll have more radio property. I will get rid of all the hate in my heart on Real Talk 1160. <laughs>